so good to join with you today. My name is Pastor Jason Kent. I'm the, the senior leader at C3 Reach Church Shell Harbour. And uh, I just want to um, share with you today uh, some really um, important material around how to pray and meditate on the scriptures. And so, you know, this is a, a really important part of our spiritual growth and development in Christ. And so, you know, uh, for me personally, um, I've practiced this method of praying and reading the scriptures myself. It's an important part of my daily devotional world um, with Christ. And I find that often the Holy Spirit will illuminate and bring revelation into areas of my life as I'm reading scripture, as I meditate upon it. And then as I pray and apply it to my life. And so really this instructional video uh, is around how to do that. And often we take for granted, oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have a prayer. You know, I'll throw up a prayer while I'm driving or while I'm hanging out the washing. And that's all good. You know, God can speak to us. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. Um, in many ways and in many settings, but it is important to make time and we'll in a moment uh, see the importance of that. And so what's going to happen in this instructional video um, is there's going to be a series of slides that uh, will come up on your screen uh, as you're watching this and you can pause or uh, rewind or kind of um, you know, look at the video as you need to. Um, you can break it down and, and break down the steps and stop it and play it again, whatever you need to do in order for this to make sense, in order for you to master uh, the steps required. And so um, I might take us through firstly and uh, just the outline for what we're going to look at today. Uh, firstly, I'm going to do a bit of an introduction and you'll see this on your screen now, a bit of an introduction uh, regarding the importance of scripture and prayer. Um, we're going to then look at seven steps. And these are firstly, the preparation of your time and your space. Secondly, the preparation of your heart. Uh, thirdly, the praying for guidance from the Holy Spirit. And fourthly, uh, reading the selected passage of scripture. Fifthly, uh, meditation upon that scripture. Uh, sixth, um, prayer from that scripture. And lastly, number seven, contemplation, reflection and application. You know, these seven steps, and, and after a while they do become very natural. Um, I've found over the years I just automatically go into those seven steps now without even thinking about it. It's very unconscious. But it's a beautiful time of framing our relationship spiritually with the Lord and uh, learning to incline our ear towards him. And so why don't we just have a look, I suppose now, uh, as I said, the introduction. So I just want to frame for us the importance of the scriptures and prayer. And I'm not going to go through every point here uh, word for word, but I am just going to touch on uh, a few things generally. So, you know, firstly, hearing uh, the voice of Christ and responding uh, to him is the most important spiritual pursuit that we can aspire to. If there's one thing that we uh, should be doing as believers and as followers of Jesus, uh, we don't want to just be Christians by name and we don't want it just to be a religious title, but we actually want to enter into a time of fellowship with the Father, with the Son, with the Holy Spirit, through his word, and um, allow ourselves to be transformed by the words of Christ. In John 6, it says, Jesus says, my words are spirit and they are life. And so Jesus' words are spiritual. They change us. They impact our thinking and our emotions and our behavior, our thoughts about ourselves and about others. So spiritual formation is an important part of our journey with Christ. And we need to abide in him, as the word says, and bear fruit. And so Jesus says in uh, John 5, 25, and I'm, all of the scriptures that I'm sharing with you today are from the New American Standard Bible. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and is now, now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God 
and those who hear will live. Now, Jesus there is talking about spiritually dead people. Dead people can't hear. We know that in the literal sense, but he's talking here about um, spiritually dead people. Uh, Jesus goes on in John 10, 27 to 28 and says, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give eternal life to them and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. And so these are two really important scriptures, firstly, that teach us the importance of hearing the voice of Christ. We need to listen and live uh, in, that, in that sense. And so, you know, when we hear the voice of Christ through the word and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, our, our lives have changed. You know, another really important scripture in that uh, vein, so we're not just reading literature like Shakespeare or like another novel or something like that. The words of Christ are eternal, the eternal word of God, as it says in Psalm 119, 89, is found in heaven. And God has revealed it to us by his spirit. And, uh, and so um, in uh, uh, 2 Timothy 3.16 to 17, it says, All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so the man of God may be adequately equipped uh, for every good work. And so here we see that we're not just reading um, any old words it's the eternal word of God. It's revealed. It's inspired by God. And it's profitable here, it says, for training in righteousness, for correction, for reproof, for daily living. You can structure and live out of the scriptures your whole life. And what you'll find is that your character and your emotions and the way you see and think about yourself and others and respond uh, in all seasons will be changed dramatically and uh, eternally. And so this is good news and, um, and part of our, our growth in the Lord. Yeah, lastly, you know, just a, there's a few other things there that you'll see on the slides, but I just want to point us also to Matthew 6, 9 to 15, where Jesus teaches the disciples and us how to pray. And so, you know, when we're praying, we're, we're communicating, we're talking with God. And what better way than to pray through uh, his words. And so I'd encourage you to read those slides uh, before we move on in a moment uh, to um, our steps on how to uh, pray or how to read and meditate and pray through the scriptures. So I hope that these couple of scriptures today have framed for you and for me here uh, the importance of prayer, the importance of hearing the voice of Jesus and uh, meditating. Uh, we're going to have a look at some of that soon about how to meditate. And so um, firstly, we're just going to have a look now at um, the first step and um, uh, in this, and it's the preparation of our time and our space. So as we're coming into a prayer time, as we're coming into communion with the Lord, as we are setting our our time and our space and getting all of these things in order because often I find it can be very distracting. And so setting, uh, preparing a time and a space for the Lord is so important. And so we, we don't want to have a floating appointment. I know a, a friend of mine, Pastor Brett Lindner, uh, coined this term and uh, he said, don't have a floating appointment. And I tend to agree. It's important that we make a time and a place to seek Jesus. So this is the first step as we're coming into our time of prayer and of reading of scripture and of meditating uh, with the Lord. And so make a time and make a place. You know, a quiet place is, uh, is, is helpful, obviously, a place that is free from distractions. Now, obviously, we do believe that God can speak to us anywhere. As our spirit-filled Christians, we know that God isn't bound by time and space, but we do see uh, that uh, Jesus taught in Matthew 6.6, 6, he says this, But you, when you pray, go into the inner room, close the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So going into uh, an inner room or a place that is secluded is optimal for beginning your prayer time with the Lord. Um, you could have some Christian music in the background. You could 
even go out to a place like a beach or a mountaintop and uh, reflect on God's glory in creation, his perfection in uh, creation in order to underpin that time of prayer. It's a wonderful source of inspiration. And so, um, you know, but Jesus uh, also taught, regu- uh, also went regularly, it says, into secluded places. Uh, in Luke 5.16, he created space. And this is the primary point I want to get to today in this first step of our preparation, is that we make time to be with the Father. We make time to draw near to God because Jesus did that regularly and that's how he was refueled. So that's the first step, preparation of your time and your space. Um, the second thing that we see um, when we're coming into this time, once your space is pre- pre- prepared, sorry, uh, and you've got the time, uh, is preparing our hearts. And this is a really important step. You know, it's important that we, um, in this time, I like to begin by focusing my breathing. And this is a really um, important step is to, I just begin to breathe in on the in-breath and then on the out-breath. And I just regulate my breathing. And that's an, a really important step to um, you know, prepare us as we're coming into prayer. Um, you know, the heart is uh, the most fragile thing, you know, and, uh, and we want to prepare our hearts. And so breathing and focusing is really, really important. Uh, I might say something, you know, like, thank you on the in-breath and then Jesus. So thank you, Jesus. And then I just focus, I close my eyes, I focus my breath and, uh, and I begin to contemplate God's goodness. You know, I begin to thank him. That's another thing that we can do. I begin to thank the Lord for the good things that he's done in my life, for sending Jesus, for bringing me into his family. I thank him for the things that he's provided uh, in creation. And so, and also I begin to forgive. And you'll see a couple of scriptures there um, in the references that are on your screen about the importance of forgiveness. And so we want to frame in this time, we want to prepare our hearts. We want to focus our breath. We want to come into a place of reflection where we're free of distractions. And so if our mind wanders, if we begin to think of other things, just bring it back to the breath, bring it back to thanking the Lord and also just preparing our hearts uh, by forgiving uh, others. Um, Thirdly, we pray for guidance from the Holy Spirit. This is a really important step. So as we, before we come into reading the scripture itself, we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth, into God's eternal word. You know, the Holy Spirit helps believers. And, um, you know, it's important that we draw on the Holy Spirit. And you'll see there before you a couple of really good scriptures about the importance. So I pray and I ask the Holy Spirit, I say, Lord, Holy Spirit, guide me and lead me in this time as I read your word. Open my mind to see, uh, my eyes to see and my ears to hear. Give me an understanding heart uh, in Jesus' name. And I just simply pray that prayer and I find always the Holy Spirit illuminates the scripture. So that's an important step to to pray uh, for guidance. Uh, The fourth Thing that we do when we uh, come to uh, pray, and um, I'm just going to bring that up, is, uh, is to then read the selected passage of Scripture. And so when you're uh, finding a passage of Scripture, you know, there are 66 books in the Bible, I find it's important to read Scripture the way it was intended to be read. So if it's a piece of, um, you know, poetry, say it's from, you know, uh, you know uh, the Song of Songs, or if it's a piece of wisdom literature, the Proverbs, or if it's a gospel, or if it's a letter, uh, read it the way it was intended to be read uh, from front to back. Sometimes we'll just get a passage of scripture and we'll just do the old flick and we say, God, speak to me. Now, God is gracious and he, you know, isn't going to you know, turn us away if we seek him. But I find the way that the Lord communicates profoundly to me is when I read it the way it was actually written and intended to be read. 
from front to back, from the beginning to the end. And so um, it's important that we, you know, say if we're reading the Gospel of Mark, it has 16 chapters. I would just start with a chapter a day and read from chapter one, centering myself, seeking the Lord, asking uh, Holy Spirit, reveal this to me. And then I'd begin to read those chapters. And as we're reading, we'd read it, read it slowly, we read it gently, and uh, until we come to a full understanding of the passage. So don't kind of jump ahead. And if you don't get something, go back and reread it. Centre yourself in that passage. It might just be one chapter uh, once a day. And then by, say, if we're using the Gospel of Mark as an example, we would start with chapter one. And then by day 16, we would have finished the, the whole Gospel of Mark and having read and reflected and prayed through it. So don't be in a rush. Don't be in a rush to get through it. Come to a full understanding. And as you're reading it, um, I ask myself the following questions and I ask the Holy Spirit. What is the passage originally communicating? So when it was written to the people that it was written to originally, what was it communicating? And for this, we might draw on a commentary um, to assist us in, in coming to an understanding. We also might ask the question, what is the passage communicating about God? Or what interests me about this passage? What disturbs me about this passage? And what does this passage ultimately mean to me? Now, you know, in the midst of that, we also want to hold the historic nature of the passage. We don't want to make it say something that it was a never originally intended to say. And so in this sense, we need to be true to the passage. But God also speaks to us devotionally. He might kind of say something to you that, that really moves you. And so we need to be aware of not only the devotional aspect of the scripture, but what it was originally intended to communicate as well. And so obviously be aware if you're reading something like uh, history or law or something of that nature, what I tend to do in passages like that uh, is reflect, uh, I reflect on what that passage means ultimately in the arc of salvation history. So in terms from Genesis to Revelation, what is that piece of history? How does that fit into God's master plan for sending Jesus? What was it communicating to the people who understood it and read it at the time? And uh, in, the, in that sense, history and passages like that, even though they can be read devotionally, also have a broader context and broader meaning and application. And so uh, that's step four, you know, selecting a passage, uh, breaking it down and uh, beginning to read it. Um, if the fifth step is meditating on the select passage of scripture. And so, you know, we see in the Bible in Psalm 1, it's, it talks about the importance of meditation on scripture, not just reading scripture. To meditate means to mutter or to turn over. And so in this step of praying and, and reading scripture and meditating upon it, um, we actually need to take the passage that we've selected and that we've read, and it's about rereading it and turning it over and allowing the Holy Spirit to illuminate the passage, to bring to the surface those things that God wants to show you about uh, that passage of scripture. Maybe something for you personally, maybe it's an issue of teaching or correction or something that he wants to do in your life. Maybe it's an issue of eternal destiny, something that he wants you to be hopeful for about the future and about what he has for you through Christ Jesus. And so we see in Psalm 1 that the man or the woman who meditates on scripture, it says that they'll prosper in whatever they do. Their roots will go deep down into the, the waters of God and that you'll be nourished. And so this is something I want through meditating on scripture. Um, so the goal is obviously to go deeper with God, to reflect um, and to um, you know, kind of turn the passage over until we come to a full understanding of it. And so the sixth step then after we've, we've meditated on the word is to then pray through the passage of scripture. So after we do this, we, we, we ask God you know, when we're praying to uh, 
for God's grace to help us to change and apply the principles and the values of what we've read to our lives. And so this is, a, this is ultimately important. We don't want to be people who uh, simply hear the word. Uh, we want to actually reflect on it and apply it. And so we ask God for the grace, God's uh, you know, help and mercy to be able to apply these things into um, our behaviour. And so, you know, um, we can also, even in this time, if the, if the scripture permits it, we can uh, put our name. So say it's like a psalm, like Psalm 23, we might pray that psalm with our name in it and we can pray that scripture through. Um, and so that's something that we can also do that, that brings the scripture home and applies it uh, to us. And so the last step as we come um, to a close is uh, the step of contemplation, reflection and application. You know, we don't want to be uh, simply hearers of the word, but we want to be doers of the word. And there's a great scripture there from James 1, 21 to 25 that you can read. And I'd encourage you to go through all of the slides that uh, we've put up today and to have a thorough read of the process and the reasoning and the, the purpose behind um, prayer and meditation and uh, the application of the scriptures. So obviously after we've then read the scripture, we've meditated upon it, we've uh, prayed for grace to be able to live it that out. We, we contemplate and we reflect on the application to our lives. And so... Um, you know, you might decide in this phase to keep a journal. Uh, you might decide to share with a friend about the journey that you're on, the thing that God's speaking to you through the scriptures, through the word. And so, um, you know, these are great ways to remain accountable and to track our progress um, as we pray and as we read and as we meditate, as we hear from the Lord. Um, I, what I try to do when it comes to application is how I have a season or a project with the Holy Spirit. And it's important that we uh, give God time. We don't want to just read it once and pray about it and think, oh yeah, that was good. That was a good insight. But actually maybe anywhere from four to six weeks can be a good way to, as you're journaling, is to apply it to your life. So it becomes a new habit. Um, you know, we want to let the word go deep down into our hearts. And uh, in that sense, it affects our character, it affects our thoughts, it affects our feelings, our attitudes, our values, our morality, and ultimately our behaviour. And this is what it means to be a transformed person. You know, our vision in our church, in C3 Reach Church Shell Harbour, is reaching people, transforming lives. And I find that the, the process of transformation comes about when I eat the Word of God. You know, even more in more recent times, we've and even now we're in a season where we, we're calling it meat, not milk. And this is how we prepare meat. This is how we eat the word of God, is we're nourished and we're sustained by the word of God. You know, Jesus uh, says, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so application is step seven. And uh, I want to encourage you, uh, you know, today just to follow each of these steps. Today we've looked at the preparation of uh, your time and your space, the preparation of your heart, praying for guidance from the Holy Spirit and reading the selected passage of Scripture, meditating on the select passage of Scripture, praying through the Scripture and applying the principles and values of the Scripture with God's help. And so these seven steps are all ways that you and I can continue to grow, that we can be formed. And this, this process of transformation, the Bible refers to it as being sanctified. In fact, in Ephesians 5.23, it says we're washed by the word. You know, we want the words of Christ the, that are spirit and that are life to transform us. And so the way we do that is we eat, we, we take part, we eat the word of God, we, we meditate upon it, we allow it to do its work deep down in our souls to transform us. I really hope today that these seven steps have helped you 
that they've been uh, a blessing to you. And I'd encourage you to go back, re-watch this uh, instructional video, um, look at the slides, uh, take notes, journal, uh, seek the Lord. And I really pray that you continue to be transformed into the image of Christ. Bless you. I'm praying for you. We'll see you soon. Yeah.